to, but can't you I, I, just like install it though? You could, but why would you want to? I'm just saying, it seems like all this retro pie stuff is like varying degrees of like. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vince Stone here to LGC Actual Switch in the Bits, doing the Nightmare Fuel in our little Linux powered studio. Joined the brick man himself, Optimus Prime, and Baby Yoda. That is Jordan Spong. And the guy next to Cage, loving Microsoft, loving Linux. Pedro Mateus, staying up late. Howdy. Together with you, <laughs> Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Now, what have we been up to since last we... I was gonna, conjoined, yes. That would be an... Oh, I, I'd have to put put it down if we were like joined in any way, shape, form, or fashion. That'd be, that'd be horrible. We gotta do the fusion <laughs> dance. No. That, yes, that, that would be. How does fu- that work with three people? Fusion. No, it, can't. Kill. it, it, it can. Like it, can. it can work with up to five people. Ha! That's some Dragon Ball lore right there. <laughs> Jeez, man. So I learned something. Um, more at eleven. I, I got a fancy new chair, but I'll tell you about that later on in the show. Um, which you know, I'm not as cool as Jordan. I don't like having spare chairs. And Jordan's like, man, I got my, my spare chair has got a spare computer chair next to it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just sitting there in the background with no one actually, you know, sitting on it. <laughs> hey, man. Dude. I mean, so, so, someone could sit on it. Maybe Jesus is sitting on there. Have you thought about that? Because God know. is everywhere. Maybe you it's sinner. Patrick Swayze's ghost. I thought it was Whippy Goldberg's ghost. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Either way, man. Either way. So I ended up with a spare computer chair. Um, Nothing wrong with it at all, man. I mean, it just got, you know, after like, Two or three years is getting a little squeaky, and that's only at certain times. Like any time I want to do a show, I'm like, "Jeez, <clears throat> really?" Which isn't a big deal <laughs> unless you're doing a show. So I got a little neighborhood app, and I'm like, "Yo, anyone want this brand new chair? Because it's probably got like what forty hours of sit down time in it. Like, come get it." I get questions back. What's wrong with it? <laughs> it's quicks. <laughs> I again just come pick it up. Just walk over and you can have well I watch it's like I I don't know I I sacrifice a kitten on it. <laughs> ah, there are you happy? I mean I can make something up. It's a free chair. Fuck right off. And um I still have the chair. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very you, happy for you. You put the bike lock on it and you put it outside. I, I <laughs> It'll disappear like immediately. I wanted to do something wrong to it. <laughs> like, uh, take one of the arms off. <laughs> Just piss on it a little bit. Yep, yeah, right. Just like, <laughs> spray some brown um, spray paint yeah. on it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. So put, put a whoopee cushion, <laughs> like just stitch it into the seat so that whenever someone sits down, they it, part. It was choosy beggars subreddit level of I had two or three of those. It was like, well, can I, can, can you come wheel it over to me? And <laughs> our houses are not next this is an old subdivision. I'm like, no, as tempting as it was, I'm like I can ride it. You want to push me? <laughs> oh, you can push yeah, me to your house. Yeah. I'll walk back. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. It's like, I, I will roll it over to your house, but I'm going to be sitting on it. And if it gets trashed, you still gotta, you still gotta take my trash. Right, I, I'm gonna try to wreck it on the way there, man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> wee, wee. <laughs> What's new with you, Pedro? Yeah, I actually managed to successfully sell three of my old laptops: the Dell Latitude D620. It uh, actually went for about double what I paid for it. I paid 16 pounds for it, and I sold it for 32. So. <laughs> The one that went for the highest How many was actually that buy you though. Uh, seven, <laughs> seven microwave burgers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How and dare the... you question our marketing juggernaut? He, he's a man of business. <laughs> And uh, the one that actually ended up going for the most was obviously the T forty. Two motherboard inside the T43 housing because after I was done scrubbing it, taking pictures and making it look, you know, acceptable, uh, ended up selling it for like almost 80 pounds. Here's the thing. Are you marketing them correctly as retro gaming laptops? (laughs) 
I did not. Damn. There's <laughs> I, I just said uh T forty three um outside with the T forty two motherboard in perfect working condition. I say uh, I say for the next <laughs> listing, we throw retro on there and see if we can get you an extra ten to fifteen yeah. percent on it. I, I mean create two <laughs> create two listings for the same item, one with retro, one without, see who gets more mm-hmm. uh gets more requests, right? Like that's market research yeah, that, 101. That was uh, it was good because I also managed to uh Basically, get all the parts for fixing the Dell Inspiron Duo, uh, which actually ended up the parts for replacing the bits that were broken ended up costing me more than the laptop itself, five pounds more, but still. So, yeah, that that that's been fixed now. It, right. it, it, everything works. It's really nice. It's running Ubuntu Mate. Uh, it's yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Can it load a web page? It does. It, it does. It can, yes. It can load Google. <laughs> yes. And it can play into the breach and uh, hack slash loot. I haven't tried anything heavier than that yet, but All right. <laughs> it plays those two yeah. games just fine. Fair enough. Know your limits, man. <laughs> Jordan, you got stabbed. I got stabbed, yeah. Um, I got stabbed last week, too, uh, but that was for an unrelated reason. Uh, but yeah, no, I got my uh, second Moderna shot. Uh, my arm is extra hurty today. But hey, in two weeks, I can go out and eat food at a restaurant. Or, well, don't I worry. Don't We've decided in the after shows, and now we're going to invite everyone to not play um, very movie things. We're going to be doing some Jackbox. So, yes. yeah. Very, very, very good. <laughs> Other, otherwise, my week has been very, very boring. I guess, I guess I'm joining Pedro for the Neverwinter Night streams for the foreseeable future, I suppose. You better. I spent a minute setting up his <laughs> vocal channel on your DAW. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So the oh, audio oh, woes oh, will them. be assorted. Hey, man. Yes. <laughs> if you're going to talk shit, be helpful. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good way to roll. Unlike the horse. I mean, the horse doesn't roll. The horse kind of crawls like some sort of infernal amoeba sucking up Windows users and spinning out I don't <laughs> know, dust mites. <laughs> the, sounds about right. It's the Steam Linux. Okay, you know, it's that time of the year again, and uh, it's a Steam Summer Sale. Thousands of games on sale. June 24th through July 8th. It looks like IOM Pacific, but it's 10 a.m. Pacific. So we got the new game mechanic. I played around with it for a minute. This is basically this year we're going to be treated to what amounts to choose your own adventure, which I clicked on like two things. It gave me a thing. Then I immediately just kind of nope the hell out as normal headed <laughs> over to steamdb.info forward slash sales, which is the right way to go through the steam summer zone. So you can sort through everything. And the only thing I saw, and I gotta say the only thing I saw, I didn't look too deep because I, I felt like I, I bought my thing was I burnt a heretic purchase on doom eternal but it did it for science because it's going to get dlss support and that that's the lie i'm telling myself how about you guys <laughs> i grabbed uh, I, I, the um, king for uh for about 10 bucks i was on my wish list um because mir has been bugging me to play that so i might do that on thursday and yeah I, I, i've been wanting i've been keeping my eye on uh celesta crown on the crown of the magister but it's still 40 dollars even on sale like no no. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, but for me, it's been uh, Chernobylite, which is the first person RPG uh, in the Chernobyl area. It, it, no, I'm not paying 34 pounds for um, an early access game. So I ended up buying Outer Worlds because it's the first time that it's been less than 50% on sale. And uh, I was saying earlier, it's it's basically Fallout New Vegas in space and Noctilus in... Um, and Discord is like, yeah, that 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 that's basically what it is. So, yeah, cool. I, I I look forward to actually having a little bit of time to sit down with it. No, it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna watch you uh, like run around ruins and I just thieve everything for an hour yes, straight. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's how you play those games. That's what. Hey, man, I understand that's your thing. You gotta, you gotta steal every wheel of cheese in the game. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> the next time, well, you, you're gonna have to steal the wheels because you can't get discounts on them anymore by using your VPN. No, oh, f- no, yeah. you cannot. Uh, as a part of their continued uh, 
aggression towards their own users, Valve have decided to limit uh, how many times you can change your Steam account's country. According to the Steam database, you can only be updated once every three months, and you need to... um, use a purchase uh, or the thing that you use to purchase the game needs to be from that region. So let's say you live in Brazil where video games are prohibitively expensive and you go maybe, ooh, maybe I'll go to like Argentina and get the game at like half the price. You're going to have to use an Argentinian method and you can only change back to Brazil three months later. Valve, seriously. You just got sued by the European Union because of this. Because you're going against the consumer um, rights that they are people in the EU are legally allowed, which is not the case for me anymore because I'm in the UK. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, people are legally allowed That's to right. shop Take around. The advice from the Brexit account. Yes. <laughs> Uh, are legally allowed to shop around all the different countries of the uh, econom- uh, European economic area uh, to find the best price. That is something that is not just allowed, that's encouraged. So just let people buy games on the cheap. It, it's better if you let them actually buy them from you, so you get money, the developers get money, instead of them going to G2A, where G2A gets money, uh, or piracy where no one's get, gets any money see you, you spend a lot of time throwing valve under the bus here man like well is just like yo we we just got in trouble for like not doing this and now we're trying to equalize this stuff and it's up to the developers to set the price and hey at the end of the day i was reading through the um steam thread on this uh, steam thread the reddit thread like well you can just buy a gift card be done with it all right yeah, there's there's always going to be ways around these uh, these restrictions, and it's it's always going to be the arms race. It's like crypto mining. Uh, you can you can try to like have hash rate limited GPUs, but people are going to find ways around that. Um, I don't I don't know um, about regional pricing. I think this this is really it more affects people who do not have a Steam currency implemented because like otherwise now you have to like go somewhere else to you know buy your games. Uh, and you won't be able to. So I think this is just going to encourage people to find the really cheap regions and park themselves there or something like that. Um, Probably something to those lines. And I think the biggest issue with this is not people that are in underserved markets. It's cheap ass bitches that yep. are jumping around constantly like, oh, I can save all this. And just, I was like, stop. Or uh, or uh, resellers, right? Like grab grab a bunch of licenses, yes. keys and stuff. G2A and, people, yes. <laughs> and again, I'm going to say to Valve's credit, they're just not stopping it. <laughs> like, yo, how about you just don't move uh, more than, you know, one time every three months? Is that too much to ask? <laughs> Pedro says uh, yes. <laughs> this, this, this is why Steam needs to accept Bitcoin, man, so that you don't have to deal with exchange rates. <laughs> Your game can cost uh, three times as much before you get done ordering it, or less. Yeah. Yes. Or, and, or, you, or uh, you, you, if you if you make your purchase, you may get insufficient funds a couple days later when the transaction actually gets verified. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> like, oh, we're 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 gonna need some more, and then you pay them, and it's like, oh, well, now it's doubled in price, so you're not getting your change. Tell me about all the fun yeah. stuff going on in Proton. Yes, there's new versions of Proton, as you may have noticed during the week. Uh, Version 6.3-5 is the current stable version, and that actually brought a bunch of new improvements. Uh, Bloodstain, Deep Rock Galactic, Metal Gear Solid 5. Thank you, Foxy, for that. I still actually need to play it. Uh, Resident Evil 2 and 3, the remakes, and Team Sonic Racing. So, yeah. They also updated uh, the XVK to 1.9. Obviously, we talked about it last week, so we knew that was coming. And VK railroad trains, like trains from the wrong uh, side of the track. Yeah, that that that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, the Secret of Mana was the one that I I actually saw a lot of people talk about on uh, on Twitter because it's it's one of those games that got a re- had a fairly popular stint for a little bit, and then. It, People were trying to play it on Linux, and it wasn't working. It does now. Uh, and the uh, in Proton Experimental, you actually have uh, the NV API uh, available. You can It's still disabled by default, but you can enable it per game. Or you can do a wide enable, but not recommended. Because remember, Proton actively lies to the games to say that you're running an AMD GPU uh, instead of the NVIDIA. Even if it shows that, oh yeah, you have the NVIDIA whatever. 
the actual stuff that the driver exposes is just the ones that are available on AMD. It's to work around a great deal many bugs, but if you want to use um, NVAPI for, say, DLSS or any of the other things that that particular API exposes, you can enable it pre-game now. So that's good. <laughs> hey, that's neat. It's out. Now, what do we think about um, Chrome OS? Because we've talked about Chrome OS and hey, could we ever game on that? And I think the best we've ever come up with, like possibly with Steam Remote Play and the mm, streaming yeah. solution. Like, yes, if you have a gaming computer in your house, maybe, and <laughs> you can yeah. put it on top of it. <laughs> Maybe. So uh, so this is from Chrome Unboxed, and this is an uh, article where someone has managed to at least attempt to get the Borealis app running. Apparently, even, even if you uh, fuck around in developer mode, uh, you can't actually get into it because it'll be like, ah, you don't have a license for it. Get fucked. But um, but yeah, it's uh, getting closer and closer. People are able to like get their hands on the executable. Um, and on, honestly, what, what's interesting from this for me is more of like... Valve has been doing a lot of work on uh, containerized gaming, right? And what, whatever Borealis is, it's, it has to leverage it, right? Because it's going to be its own container aside from, like, Crostini to actually give you, like, a user space that has, you know, actual Unix utilities. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, it's it's ho hopefully this is where we're going to start seeing some of the cool sauce that Valve is working on via Pressure Vessel. But the other question I have is, like, are we going to, to Ven's point, like, Chromebooks don't, really have good hardware the big selling point is hey all your shit exists in the cloud this is a dumb terminal that connects to google services so you can watch youtube videos and check your email and and adopt google, google docs uh, the, they, <laughs> i just don't think they've done a good enough job at, or even the manufacturers of chromebooks because they've gotten so bargain basement and so cheap at this point they don't do a good job explaining to the customers like yo this is a dumb terminal quit trying to run obs yeah. on it it's not gonna fucking happen <laughs> right so 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 th this begs the question are we going to start getting like beefier chromebooks with dedicated gpu maybe maybe this is why we're starting to see dlss and shit on uh google in, in what google released a thousand dollar chromebook they, that, they, they did yeah only a with certain specific number of people bought. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right but but again like now, now it's like oh well you can play your games on proton now maybe that's a better maybe that's a better thing or is it going to be uh because valve is also doing a lot of game streaming stuff google attempted something with stadia and then decided it wasn't, wasn't worth their time but is this just going to be a dumb is borealis just going to be a glorified dumb terminal for uh for like streaming services or are you actually going to be running games locally um uh, there are already, uh, you, even not counting, you know, the Pixel, uh, Pixel Chromebook. Dell, for example, makes the 7400 Chromebook, which is a very good laptop in it, in itself, and it runs Chrome OS, and it has, you know, all of the characteristics as the non-Chromebook version of the 7400. And I can absolutely see someone, even with that laptop, with the XZ graphics, and just playing games on it because uh, even without uh, even without this currently working on my Chromebook I have gotten Steam to work in Crostini and the performance isn't great but you can play games games like Into the Breach uh, and uh, what was the other one I tried um the card game not Grift Lens uh, no really <laughs> gives a fuck if you can play your basic bitch games on limited hardware like yeah of course you can I can play better games yeah. on my mobile phone. I mean, that's the thing. It wasn't you couldn't because hardware acceleration over Crestini was terrible. But that's actually so, been severely improved, and I guess that's what Borealis thing, is going to leverage. One thing I wonder as well is like Chromebooks already do not have a lot of storage because they want you to pay for Google Drive to store all your shit in the cloud. So if you're going to be natively playing games, are you going to need better or like better than EMMC or at least larger storage well, I think than that the 32 is gigs the, they provide? Pointer right there of um because that's a very valid point. This is probably going to end up being some type of streaming service, possibly from Valve and Flying Spaghetti Monster. Help us! Um, it's it's going to be rough. So yeah, mm, yeah. I don't know. I'm interested. I don't think I. You ever go out and buy a Chromebook to play games on? I, I mean, if they if they released a decent one with like a dedicate with a dedicated GPU that isn't a complete piece of shit, mm -hmm. and like the performance was there, then you know maybe if I want to play some games on the road, especially especially if they can give me a good battery life. Mm. 
that would be... We're not the market. The market here is for those kids that have a Chromebook that was uh, given to them by their school. School's not good enough. So they can install Steam and just play their games. <laughs> yeah, no, no, those, those Chromebooks are locked down. So... Uh, you'd be surprised. Well, they're, oh, yeah. they're also well, going to be mean, the you... low, lowest <laughs> bidder, so they're not even going to have... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm, it's just that I'm, uh, the the schools in Portugal that are handing out the um, x86 Chromebooks, granted, bottom of the barrel, even slower than the one I have, but it's a computer. Oh if no! If you could watch my Steam children, and play my, even the basic bottom bitch games, that's better. My than child nothing. is playing Into the Breach. No, instead of <laughs> learning math. Yes. So oh, um, <laughs> railroad. We talked about two trains, which sadly enough is not. They don't have the mascot. Not, not one cup. No, I was hoping for the mascot um, two chains two, was going to be like two trains. Two trains. Yeah, but hey. yeah, un- unfortunately, you don't you don't get much. You just get a, a track diagram. Yeah, this is rail route. Um, you ever want to play train simulator without, you know, the trains or those pesky graphics? Then this is the game for you. It's um, for making railroads, uh, doing track automation, traffic control, etc. I'm sure there are a bunch of you management simulation loving sickos out there who are looking at this and going like, oh, fuck, this is exactly what I want. And this is for you. And it has very positive reviews. So people seem to be enjoying what the game is offering. And so if I'm looking you at are, this and I immediately thought is, I know some engineers that need to play this uh, with their PCB layouts. Um <laughs> It was that game. Uh, well, not a game, more of a creation tool thingy that allowed you to create your own also, PCBs like and test them. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, it's, it's, it's colon, it's equals, equals, equals D, tilde, 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 right? Like, the game. Yeah. But, I mean, that that's kind of the point. Basic graphics, uh, you're only really dealing with the, the traffic uh, control and flow control and whatnot. So, you know what? I, I guess people people are into it. It's available. It's not horribly priced either. What is it now? Fifteen bucks uh, Canadian, so fourteen ninety nine US, something like that. If that's your gem, you could probably uh, for even play it on your game. Chromebook, couldn't you, Pedro? Yeah. This one you uh, could. Yeah. With those requirements, I'm not sure. <laughs> one point three on the low end. Two point six. Really dialed in on that CPU speed. Mm. <laughs> one point six, two point four. But yeah. Hey, <laughs> your Chromebook definitely has enough space to run it, though. There you go. So. Yeah, but my Chromebook has a 64 gigabyte uh, SD card in it. <laughs> so. Well, my Chromebook could beat up your Chromebook. See you Probably. at the flight pole after school. <laughs> Pulsar, <laughs> Lost Colony. I, we play, uh, Sandy and I played a little bit of this uh, on the Thursday stream a couple years ago, back when this was in early access. Okay. It's uh, one of these uh, bridge commander type games where um, each of you sort of, when, when you use the captain, when you use the pilots, when you use the engineer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, no, and you all, con- you all control the ship. Boo. And you can like beam out into other, um, beam out into other I ships. I want to beam your ass out randomly. I, w- I want to <laughs> beam you up like in space balls so that you have a front butt. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, you it, it it's very much like a Star Trek simulator. You go around, you do missions, go on star bases, do your commerce, go out into space, fight aliens, that kind of crap. It's okay. Uh, I'm curious to see uh, what kind of uh, improvements they've made uh, since uh, leaving early access because it's very it's very much like um, it's what Guns of Icarus was trying to be in terms of cooperation because everyone has to do something. No one. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit a little more bit of a Babylon vibe to it. Mm-hmm. A, a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, there's definitely, thing. there's definitely potential there. Um, it's out now. You can pick it up for uh 1999 cause it's 28% off on release. Yeah. I guess check it out. I kind of want to try it because uh, they made a thing. I was like, oh, yeah, you could explore a randomized galaxy following into chaos. Like, okay. I am curious about the exploration element. Uh, the idea behind, you know, games like this ever since uh, Notch was working on Tent to the Sea. I've been interested because I want that. I, I really want, like, the cooperative fly a ship, go to planet, explore, then take the ship back to the space station, do the selling, and, you know, do that. And space, that bit of exploration, yeah, that bit of exploration, I like. I just I really want to like. be the psychotic <laughs> ship that kills the crew randomly. Yeah, well, okay. Don't you, be in a ship with uh, Ven. Then. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, Ven's been watching too much original Star Trek. Where if you show up on a planet and there's not a crazy person, something is terribly wrong. I, I'm just saying, I'd be a nice ship for a little bit. <laughs> Let, let's all get inside Ven and fly away. Oh, is that a Maybe star? We can... 
I'm just yeah. saying, if I could survive <laughs> it, um, we can I find mean, out if how, you want. How fast can you get to the pizza joint, though, at, like, oh, warp speed? man. So, life on a pizza is difficult. You got to understand some things, like teeth and floating clappy jaw things. All right, we're talking about this. That's some, like, Lovecraftian shit right there, just a disembodied mm-hmm. jaw coming to eat you. It is, Fuck, man, That's terrifying. It. So, uh, you are no longer the eater. You are the eaten. Play as the toppings. Try to survive on a pizza from a hungry jaw biting its way Who to you. carrots on pizza? Monsters. Customize the pizza, uh. pick a mode, and your <laughs> topping. Then hop in this hysterical party or solo game. So, I wanted to throw this in. Yeah, did you see that shot? Man. Arr. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yep. Vor, vor enthusiasts. <laughs> This is for you. It is. Yeah, no, I I have questions about the monsters, namely what kind of monster eats a pizza from the outside in? The kind of, it it clearly, what are you talking about? It's right here. Outside in. That's how you eat pizzas. What are you talking about? Yeah. (laughs) Pizza, stuffed crust pizza, man. You you need to try one. This is free to play and it has online co-op. I downloaded it and wiggled around for a minute. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but it should work on anything, including your own book. Will it, will it run on Haiku, does, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You can put your pay for it. Go try it out. All this is going to be in the show notes. But let's keep the uh, free game train rolling. Yes. Team Fortress 2 specifically. And uh, if you've been following the Team Fortress 2 uh, news lately, you probably know that they've had a bit of a bot problem a since a few years Ever. ago. And this is probably the first update that that has actually been moderately successful at getting rid of most of them. Can we all all. agree that I would go play Team Fortress 2 if that was a thing? That that is a thing. That was like uh, the second event since the game came out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's the co-op mode. And the... Robots? Yeah. No robots. Well, Team Fortress 2, you're cooler than I thought you were. (laughs) <laughs> yeah no the the actual bots are not the men versus machine ones they're actual uh, people who are using less than legitimate means to either level up their characters or maximize their in-game currency uh, that stuff and this particular update that valve released Patrick, on what do you uh, have against winners Needs more I have tiger nothing blood. against winners <laughs> <laughs> it's the really really sore losers that cheat to win that I have a problem with. Uh, and yeah, uh, on Tuesday they released a patch and people seem to agree that there are a lot less bots uh, in matches now. And they also, uh, because one of the things that the bots used to do is change their name to a legitimate player's name so that it would create confusion and sometimes a legitimate player would get banned instead of the bot. And then you have a VAC ban on your account and yeah, no one wanted to deal with that particular bit of shit. Debatable. So that this is good news. This is very good news. <laughs> well, the one yeah, thing they, I saw was it crashed every <laughs> single source mode. Oh, custom! This guy's angry. He's I mean, a, 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 a little bit, but he like paid good money for this thing. He's not. I, I mean, I mean, it, it, he says casual is bot free. Go play. Offer valid until one of these idiots fix it again. I mean. So from what I can see from the community reaction, like, yeah, a bunch of mods and anti-bot training stuff are busted as a result, but the trade-off is actually being able to play the game you paid for. So I'm glad the TF2 community has their priority straight, because I know, I know, especially under Linux, you make a change to one little thing and people lose their goddamn minds. But <laughs> <I know>. like, <laughs> well, yeah. you got to think, Team Fortress 2 is a great place to experiment, because yeah, you can get a refund for your free game. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you bought it. I mean, you can't. You've owned it for... Even if you paid for it when it was still paid for, it's been more than two weeks. $300. This game sucks. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I remember buying the orange box back in the day. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's not all the time we get to celebrate a point release. Yeah. Creator Crate uh, is leaving early access soon. Not quite now. Not quite. Um, it's still... Look it's not there. out yet. It's coming spoon. Uh, but yeah, uh, Creator Crate, uh, Enders 1.0, they fixed a bunch of bugs. I tried to figure out what the hell this game is because the it's got trailer does. It's going on, doesn't it? Yeah, the, the trailer does, does a very poor job of explaining what it is. So, my, I, I, so it has a demo. I downloaded it. I tried it out just because, like, maybe if I play the game, I will understand it a little better. And I guess, sort of, kind of, it's weird. It's like a single player, more physics y, like, speedrunners where there's a lot of like knocking stuff and like 
swinging around and trying to not get murdered by things. So, and the, 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 the gimmick here is that you're in a, in a 2d realm world that actually simulates gravity. So the closer you are to the core, the smaller, your, the shorter your jumps are, and the further you are away from the core, the longer your jumps are. So lots of interesting stuff. It could, it could be good. I played around with it for a little bit. It's okay, but I'm also not a big fan of precision platformers. Maybe if you are, you will enjoy this. Uh, so try it out. It'll be out soon. Hopefully it'll be reasonably priced. And there's the demo. So, I mean, it, yeah, yeah. Give it a shot. You might like it. Uh, one last bit before we get out of the steam segment is, but it's not, it's not yeah. open source, open source. <laughs> it is actually open source. It is free to play on steam. So, uh, if you don't want to go tangle with it elsewhere, you can just download it from steam. And this story comes, uh, kudos to Mir, uh, who, uh, gave me a heads up about it earlier in the week. So beta release for one fifteen fourteen, on which is, it can be, yeah. yeah. I've seen it. It can There's be. Yeah. I'll allow it. Fine, as you are. And yeah, this is actually the first beta for version one sixteen, which is the next big one. And with this one, they added the Isle of Mists for multiplayer, which was a single player campaign, so you can actually play it co op with someone now. Very good. And uh, I scrolled down to the <laughs> to the bug fixes, and I saw the fix the seahorse unit graphic. Oh, okay. All right, there. Finally, <laughs> they have seahorses in the game. It's the sea steam. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's Wesnoth. The chances are, if you're on Linux, you play this game at least once. Uh, this was, was one of the first when I started playing around with Linux. It's like, oh, Battle for Wesnoth. Let, let, let's install that. Just try it out. It's like, oh, the, the type of um, Age of Empires situation that we got going on here. Okay, all right. I, I don't like RTS, so... I gave up on that real quick, but it was one of the first, and it was there. It's been, it's been a mainstay, and I'm and I'm glad that it ha- it's found a home on Steam because, like, a it's great yep. for distribution. It's good for discoverability as well because a lot of these open source games they've been around for fucking ever. No one's playing them because no one's heard of them. So super you, you're just absolutely forget about them. Like super tux card, you think like what's not stuff like this blenders even like hey and like yes, it doesn't make sense at first, but yes. I mean, applications on Steam, like, yes, that's how I install Blender now if I want to do that. Because mm-hmm. I'm always getting the updates. I'm not having to go to the web zone, download stuff. Same thing applies to your open source game. I really wish Valve would, like, come out with some, like, open source conservatorship program so that we can get more of these open source games on Steam, like, gratis. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. just so that, like, yeah, just so that they're <laughs> more discoverable, right? Like, that's that's kind of the big thing. Um, right. So, Yeah. Coming up next, NVIDIA is very, very charitable, and AMD has a McDonald's coupon. And here we are. It's uh, It's been another surprisingly full week for the horse, oh, but uh, now we like need a to... a chorus plug in. I can't born to <laughs> Oh, we absolutely should, but maybe another time. Now, now we actually need to thank you. All, everyone who's out there attention. listening they or Highlander watching their song going through their head, yeah, they can't hear they're, you. They're, <laughs> no, they're just, they're just watching Highlander right now. Right. They, they have, they have like, L, yeah, they have like LGC on their phone in the background, and they're just watching like Clancy Brown and um and what's his fuck just swing swords at That's each other. Always. Christopher Lambert, L- Lambert, Lambert, Lambert. He's Lambert. French Pedro. I'm sorry, my bad. If you want, and if you would like to lambaste Pedro on his pronunciation of French words, <laughs> you can head on over to patreoncom slash You type cast. it Lambert, I tap it, tap it. Yes, I tap the Lambert. Uh, you say you say Lambert, I say Lambert. You say tomato, I say tomato. <laughs> go to go to patreoncom slash yes. Become a story. Patreon. Yeah, give us money. Um, get some cool stuff like access to our Discord channel, which you can also get from subbing to Switch. But if you're an executive producer, then you get access to the pre pre super season, the live production meeting that we do at 7:30 before the show, where we, I don't know, the the, the topic we is fairly meetings. random. Yes, we we definitely talk about things unless we all get together for a trine on Thursday, and then we're just like we've run out of shit to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah we got nothing. It's pretty dull. We're just Indeed. sleeping sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but, you know, uh, Patreon also can get you some other cool stuff like access to the show notes. You can make suggestions. You can issue uh, story corrections. You can issue stories. You can even buy your way on the goddamn show. Uh, we have a brand new Patreon. We got to thank uh, Oil of Hope, Oily Hope. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot for that. Uh, we got stores, store.linuxteamcast.com. Buy some T-shirts, buy some merch. 
We got stickers. We got not Ven's shirt. No, I was like, I, no, no sparkly vampire shirts on there. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I don't know. If we, if we set up like an official LGC eBay, can we like sell your used shirts to fanboys? Ew. Oh, it, the YouTube it comments. Make, the amount of it, YouTube uh, comments that Ven gets is like, oh, that voice. It oh. would make so, it would make so much money. Dude, this, this is like this is like one of the things you learn real quick. Um, guys creep on guys. Like, like mm, could you don't, yeah. mm, don't oh, yeah. these words for me? <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. So, 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 send, 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 send feet pics, please. No. If, yeah. if I start putting stuff on eBay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna start showing up in like uncomfortably tight shit. I'm like. Mm. Why? <laughs> you know, just, like, just like Hulk out. Yeah. At the end of it, like. <laughs> but I just can't breathe, so I fall over. You, you, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just an awful course. Moral of the story: stick uh, to stickers. Yeah, they're cheap. Yeah, they're uh, die cut and they're nice. Uh, we got uh, we got uh, wish zones on yes. Amazon. If you go to linuxteamcast.com, put your mouse over the support button. Uh, go to wish lists. Uh, I have one. Ven has one. Pedro has one. You can buy some stuff off there. Uh, you can give us a little letter that you get to read. Or you get to make us read. Uh, within no, reason. fuck it. We're gonna send it back to <laughs> yeah. you. You read it. Tell us. Um, <laughs> you read it. We, record a video and read it. <laughs> yeah, uh, we we got we got we got a we'll bunch a of stuff from uh, e- Eship uh, this week. Yes, I guess. <laughs> Ven, Ven, you got something. Pedro got something. My thing hasn't arrived yet. So okay, we're gonna save that for next week. Yes, I'm gonna be putting um, Eship up. I think I'll do it Wednesday. I might do it in during the break because I, you got to jerk these markers off. Have fun. Right. Clip that. Um, <laughs> and we're going to find upstanding cannibal wall because um, I, I have a extravagant shit on the studio wish list, like chairs. <laughs> got a new chair. <laughs> that, that, that you can't give away. It's crazy. Yeah. Moral of the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is uh, it's a chair. It's nice. I like it. And um, it's like all art deco way. You can't see it because it's just too short. I tried to show it off on uh, Wednesday. I'm like, oh, well, no, can't see it. Well, that's a thing. But Ishep, thank you very much. And he wrote a message to me. No one should still be wishing. Wait, wrong one. Wrong me. one. One that's ass next, next week. <laughs> as requested from Ishep. <laughs> I'm happy to report it is chairing very well. Yes, and uh, over here, uh, Ishep also sent me a thing, which I had assumed would come from a mysterious stranger on Wednesday, but no. It's the uh, new wizard robes. Very, very sparkly wizard robes. Uh, this is just a hood. Uh, the rest of the robes are actually in my um, wardrobe. Uh, because uh, I did put it on, it's like the moment it came in, it's like, all right, okay, we got to put this on. <laughs> and Nori looked at me, it's like, yep, yeah, you looked apart. So, <laughs> thank you. And no uh, photos, Ishep says, uh, no, you no you photos. He didn't. You, 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 you got a model. Photos, you so. got a model for this hot couture <laughs> wizard robe that Ishep sent you. So you, I'll put you him can on really again show and him ask Nori to take photos, and then I will uh, absolutely yeah. post him uh, on Discord and on Twitter. Look forward right. to them. Yes. Uh, yeah, so man, Ishep like, says, like lay down in the bed, and like Nori can <laughs> win in the robes, and Nori can cover you in bees. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> draw, draw. <laughs> Draw me like one of your French wizards. Covered in bees. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Ishab says apparently there wasn't an option uh, on Amazon to add a message, but he says hopefully this one lasts a bit longer. Thank you, because yes, the previous one was actually falling apart. It was cheap, to be fair. So thank you very much uh, for the new robe. You will see it in action in the review coming later. And I also need to thank Artherin for two things. First one is this uh, a fan. It, it's just a box. <laughs> it's a, a Noctua Chromax 40, uh, 140 mil fan, which uh, is already mounted in the Dark Rock 4 uh, Be Quiet. I, I bet you don't have a picture <laughs> of that sync. fan in your wizard robes either. I, I have a picture of that fan. I posted it on Discord. Uh, and on Not in the wizard robes, though. <laughs> Not in the wizard robes. <laughs> You but put the not fan the wizard robes, robes, not yet. Preferably and something put the else. fans on. <laughs> yeah, you, no, you, you, you gotta else. screw it in, too. <laughs> there was something else, but first I gotta read the uh, the thing that came with the fan. <clears throat> Hola, Pedro. Here's some 140 mil whoosh for you. I can't think of anything clever or funny to add. Blame the nasty weather. Yours hatefully from Artherin. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. You, you 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 missed the obvious that blows pun, Arthur, and shame, shame. Oh, oh, you wait for that. 
Because the second thing that our Theron sent me, uh, which I put on my wish list, oh, is like, because <laughs> no, 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 it was more of a uh, suggestion because I was talking about getting one of those uh, compressed air cans or borrowing it from work, mm-hmm. and it's like, don't get those, get one of these. Oh, I ordered the With- better version of that. Yeah. <laughs> So, so I, I, um, I, I, I got a hang question on, for you, on, Pedro. No, 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 no. Let's back this up. Right. Hold this up to the camera, Pedro. Because, all right, what, what are you thinking? Like, uh, I, uh, I'm thinking like one of those like uh, nose teapots, but for like a horse. I, I was, I was gonna say like, how, how much time did you spend running around pretending that it was a gun? <laughs> Not enough, apparently. <laughs> No, also, but yeah, no, I did I, I'm plug it in. Very and disappointed first... if the manufacturer didn't have like a suck mode on it. So when you first went to blow it in your face, yeah. it like stuck right to your forehead. And you're like, no, it doesn't have suck mode. But the Ooh. first thing I did was point it directly at my face. <laughs> Even it's on gone the, from uh, suck to blow. <laughs> that that would have been great. <laughs> Even without the uh, little constricting nozzle, because it comes with three extra nozzles. This is awesome. Um, even without the constricting one, it even. On the one setting, it blows, and it blows very, very much. So, thank you very much, Arthur. He also sent a note with this one. So, give me a second. <clears throat> hey, yeah, with this fancy suck with two C's, you no longer need to buy or borrow compressed air cans. It saves a lot of time with cleaning pewters. Uh, just don't stick. Your dick in it. <laughs> it hurts, a friend told me. Uh, your eternal not simp from Arthurin. Thank you, Arthurin. And no, I will not be uh, sticking my dick in it. Uh, that's what vacuum cleaners are for. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, there you go. If you want to see Pedro's bloody stump, join our Patreon. He'll be there posting pictures there later. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's like Hedwig in the Angry Inch, but with more Pedro. All right. NVIDIA. NVIDIA did it good. And it's, you know, hey, some people don't like NVIDIA. They got a little problem with them. You know, maybe one Linus, you know, when he's not handing out his wacky tech tips, he's uh, telling NVIDIA to go fuck themselves. Um, but occasionally we we talk a lot of smack about NVIDIA. So when they do something good, you got to give them credit because, hey, you don't want to go through your life loving one soulless corporation over another one. Now, do you? Some of you do. What I'm talking about is NVIDIA DLSS is uh, coming to Rust, Doom Eternal, Lego, all this stuff. And why are we talking about that? Well, it's also available on the Linux via Proton. Yeah. <gasps> via the Proton. It's I an know. experimental right now. <laughs> it is, man. And uh, yeah, I, I played around with it. You can head over to our web zone. Let's see what it, uh, it's going to be in Unity as well. Okay. I didn't even realize that, but I knew it was going to be an Unreal Engine 4 and 5. That's kind of brilliant, but yeah, look at that. We got a little penguin down here on the NVIDIA page and um, Vulcan support on June 22nd. It's already currently available in Wolfenstein, No Man's Sky, and uh, not Doom Eternal yet. That's going to be right at the end of the month. And uh, what we should make a point of saying is it currently only supports Vulcan titles, but later on it's going to support uh, DirectX. And that's the thing because we're using DXVK, which is very interesting. Now, I played around with it on... Um, like the irony was completely not lost on me. Uh, Young blood, which Jordan and I powered our way through. Over, uh, yeah, like I pa- uh, pa- powered is kind of a poor word selection. Fumbled, <laughs> run around the pillar, yeah, yeah. defeat the final slapped boss. our way through. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a game. <laughs> we made it all the way through, <laughs> and uh, I never, never thought I would reinstall that. But here we are, because hey. We had to take the Pepsi challenge with it. Uh, head over to our web zone, linuxgamecast.com, if you want to play around with it. All you need is the 470-4201 Linux beta drivers and um, a 20 series or above. I even put science sliders up so you can squint. Now you can kind of see it right there on the... Um, yeah, with, with the lighting for yeah. sure. And if mm-hmm. you look at the uh, manhole cover, you can see texture differences and also in the reflection disappear yes yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's definitely very subtle but it but it is there like the the, the lighting is a lot better the like the the effects in general no. so i mean it's 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 nice to see yeah um i'm not worried so much as because we got to say uh young blood running on the id engine was very very performant even under um just regular proton but this did allow me to on my little 2060 no cape edition 
run it at UHD, 3840 by 2160. And it was without DLSS 2.0. It could almost hit 60, almost on like high. And I kick this on and all of a sudden I'm at like 78, 80. And oh, that's neat. So I want to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. And later on, we're going to get support for Red Dead Redemption 2, which I have an interest in because the 2060, not quite enough, not quite enough power right now to run that at a solid 1080p 60 in a, at a graphical quality setting that looks acceptable. And you're like, this looks like a PS3 game. Yeah. What, what, what are we going to do though? Cause like Pedro and I, we don't, we don't have any tensor noodles. We're, we're kind of screwed if we yeah. want sort of super resolution stuff. No, you just go out and go, go to your local store and just get one of the NVIDIA cards off the shelf. <laughs> yeah. you know the uh, 730s for 500 pounds yeah yeah this is like I, some I, NVS I, 400s true true story i have considered grabbing a ps5 just because i saw they were in stock at a place i was walking by and i'm like <laughs> maybe that, you could have probably made some money off of that yeah yeah <laughs> But yeah, now as Jordan was hinting at, there is uh, one other solution out there that allows you to have um, no nope. type of DLSS uh, type of situation. Nvidia invented this, and they got it; they own it all. Eh, Nvidia has been playing around with the dynamic upscaling and downscaling for a long time. They have, uh, but there is another competitor in the GPU market until Intel finally decides to release their uh, Melana XG1. or uh, Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're back. talking about 3d market here <laughs> voodoo <laughs> no, no longer a thing unfortunately but yes this is amd uh fidelity fx if you've been on the internet over the past couple of weeks you've probably heard about fidelity fx super resolution or fsr and much like amd's previous efforts they've decided to open source this under the gpu open initiative which they have been uh, releasing competitors to NVIDIA's all of the like shader effects hair, and hair, hair, hair works, that shit, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mantle. All of that. AMD has an open source counterpart under the GPU open thing. And much like those previous efforts, they have decided to do the same with their super resolution upsampling uh, algorithm. Let's call it that. The. Um, it's a typical AMD move because I guess they're expecting someone like the people working on the Mesa drivers to basically fix oh, their software AMD and implement it for man, them. With my wholly original slider. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, AMD has always been very much reliant on literally anyone else developing their software for them because even back in the ATI days, they, they their software support was terrible and it know, hasn't I, gotten I, I much am better. Sliding this drag thingy <laughs> around looks, and I can kind of oh, see their a web pixel. team. No, I can kind of see. Their web team is on point. <laughs> I can kind of see a pixel moving around in the foliage a little bit. So yeah, it, it's trash. I, I don't, honestly, it looks it looks a little worse to be honest. But um, I not don't know, much. Like, not 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 much. But like, eh, I don't know. I, I I it looks like a regression to me. It's it's cool because like yeah, um, uh, re, uh dynamic um resolution or upscale resolution upscaling or downscaling is a really good solution for squeezing a little bit more performance out of gpus to display at higher resolutions which you know when you when you look at stuff that's going to be potentially running on chromebooks or even older laptops it's very much mm -hmm. needed especially for like the lower end gpu space because you know uh dlss is nice but you need you need tensor cores you need a brand new nvidia gpu so hopefully brand hopefully brand, well semi brand new you mean last generations Newer than what uh, I have. I mean, been. they're more expensive now than they were at release. So yeah, I guess that counts. Yeah, <laughs> that makes something new. <laughs> if I haven't seen it, it's new to me. The, the <laughs> recent, whatever. The, the the point is that hopefully this opens it up for uh, other other games, other drivers, and hopefully we can get some better performing games at Linux. And hey, look at it this way. I mean, unlike um, Nvidia's proprietary horseshit, this is open source. So I'm sure. Uh, no, it still has to be integrated on a per game basis. Yes. So both of them have that like big whack mm -hmm. against them, but Hey, let's sit back and do you think we'll, well, okay. It's going to be, it's AMD. It's open source. It's on you community to get this up and running. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Not AMD. And Mason, Intel Mason was actually very much on board with this. So hopefully Intel will actually just slap AMD down. It's like, look, we made your thing work better. 
<laughs> well, they can just throw some money at people. I mean, it's Intel. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, it's Intel. I, Come on. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're 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 definitely gonna see that when like the the big chunky XC graphics comes out, they're see, they're gonna be spending like, a lot here, of money. Make it work. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the Intel here, penguin. It's, it, it's gonna work great. <laughs> Hopefully, some of that will trickle upstream to open source. But you know, yeah, gotta take gotta take that bong hit. So easy anti cheat though. Yeah, man, it's coming to Linux. Hundred percent guaranteed. That's the thing. So uh, th- this came up uh, earlier in the week, and uh, anti cheat interfaces, or as you may know it, Easy Anti Cheat, currently owned by Epic, and now they're not even pretending that they're a separate thing. They're just changing the name and saying it's our own thing again. Fuck's sake. Uh, and they say so it's like, okay, there's a, effectively a new version of Easy Anti Cheat that's coming out, and it's going to have all of these great things, which you can go and read the article. But the interesting bit that has Ven is uh, highlighting there is Mac and Linux client support are coming soon. Okay. All right. This is where I have a problem with it because, hey, Epic, Easy Anti Cheat already works natively on Linux. Games like Robocraft, Seven Days to Die. The culling. You know, games yeah, that people bad. aren't playing. But <laughs> hey, Pedro, you know what? I'm epic. And, you know, it's not our fault. Developers don't fucking implement it, son. Why are you trying to blame us? <laughs> That's the thing. Sorry. I'm it's epic. already I just working. Dro- I just Some developers. My mic all over that. <laughs> <laughs> Some developers already implemented it because, yes, Robocraft and Seven Days to Die are currently still active. The culling died, but yes, EAC is running on Linux natively. There is factual, demonstrable evidence of that. Yeah, but you're upset so, because you can't play it with your hacky wine. You just want to hack yes. our servers. That's all wine is good for. <laughs> that, that's what everyone has been asking for. Listen, The man, ability to uh, run hey, Proton again, games with again, the AC. <laughs> here at Epic, we listen to our employees, and the new guy we hired from Blizzard told us that wine <laughs> is only for hacking. It is. Yeah, no, because uh, EAC stops a lot of hacking. Let's go look up videos of people bypassing EAC on Windows. And but, what's okay, EAC okay, stopping so pay, again? Oh, yeah, people trying to pay, play Pedro, Windows games argument, on Linux. The argument doesn't hold water because these companies don't care. It's it's security fear. Yes. It is because, it is because <laughs> hey, we put something in place to stop the hackers and the cheaters to protect our bottom line. Ultimately, we can't get functional, easy anti-cheat under Linux anyways until that's just called dispatcher subsystem is completely baked. Because that's the mm-hmm. only realistic way that it can, you know, function within the Linux kernel space. So I would, yes, uh, to that point, I would love to see Easy Andy Cheat start making contributions to the kernel, or at least testing stuff with the Syscall Dispatcher people, trying to make that system as smooth as possible. But that would require Epic to actually do something that doesn't involve just throwing money at the problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or you know, not actively releasing a version when they find when there is progress on that dispatcher system. That actually gets EAC games working on Linux this, and releasing the, a patch to immediately problem, break them, which the, has happened the twice. The whole problem with your theory is you <laughs> think Epic gives a singular fuck <laughs> they, they, in they the don't. first place. They don't. Like, whatever. Go have fun, nerds. Yeah. Um, if you can get it reversed, and we'll, we'll change a thing and it'll be broke tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Which they have yeah. twice. It's because <laughs> you're using that hacker wine. <laughs> listen, listen. If if because proton, it's a, if proton or wine, proton can figure is a out a way. Valve thing. <laughs> Make, here, 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 here's, oh, here's, oh here's, hang here's, on, hang on. I just thought of a beautiful, beautiful, horrible nightmare. Epic releases a build of wine. With oh no 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 no. Okay, what, what, admittedly, what's, what's I tried happen? that. <laughs> what's what's gonna happen is if wine can implement a thing so that whenever you make a purchase in Fortnite. It charges your credit card twice. Then they're absolutely <laughs> going to be supporting easy anti cheat on Linux. It. Can't do it. The store only supports one singular purchase at a time, man. Do it. Too bad. No, they'll, they'll, they'll patch that in just for <laughs> Linux. Okay, they're going to add a card just for that. Yeah. So uh, level design's never been an easy thing to do, but um, LDTK wants to simplify the business. Yeah, um, if you are making a pixel platforming game or pixel adventure game or just generally a pixel game, odds are you're going to need some sort of sprite stamper. Um, boundary drawing thing, uh, and this is one from the makers of Dead Cells, which is I've pretty heard of that. Yeah, that that lo- that explains why those sprites looked very very familiar. Okay. I, uh, I, fi- <laughs> I find it ironic that this is a level design tool from a game that implements no level design. But you know what? I'll, I'll take it. Right, it's free. Um, so it says if you scroll down, there's an Ubuntu experimental version. It's just an app image. You can run it. It runs. I made a one platform level, and I went. Yep, it definitely works. 
I also made a huge sigh of relief because it's like, oh, good. I don't have to extract a dev file and figure out the correct place to put out everything, which is real <laughs> handy. I um, so comments. Yeah. It immediately went into 32 bed. Like, we're, 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 we're. That's yeah. it. They're like, yeah, oh, it's, 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 it's too big. I, uh, my level editor <laughs> that I've downloaded off itch is 100 megabytes and it should be less than 100 megabytes. No, Jordan, to your point earlier, do you think that this is the thing that they didn't use for Dead Cells because, oh, we got the random generator working, so we don't actually need this. What do we do with I, it now? I, I, th I think what happened was they were trying to develop this to make levels for Dead Cells, but they couldn't make it in time. I, I, I think they had to train the RNG yep. at some <laughs> So yeah. they, they had to put like, the general idea. I'm like, kind of make that. But hey, it's it's available. It seems to work. Uh, if you are a 2D game dev, maybe check this out. Maybe this will make your workflow a lot easier. It seems to have a lot of mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. features in there. Um, it's fully customizable. It's HTML5 uh, based. So yeah, uh, have that. Has Elite Dangerous came out yet? I mean, it's it's uh, out. Yeah. You're, I think you're thinking of uh, Star Citizen. That's the one that's in perpetual yeah. The Star Citizen access. is not out yet. No, <laughs> I, I I own Elite Dangerous. I've tried to get in there through Steam a couple times, and it's like you got to link your accounts and blah blah blah, and then it doesn't fucking. It work. doesn't work. Yeah, the, that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, was the long way of saying yes, it has been. So this is a love letter to the Elite Dangerous racing community because people like to race in Elite Dangerous. Uh, so says this GitHub. And the read me and it's like, Hey, go have some fun with that. Fly dangerous. No, don't do that kids. So yes, racing exists in elite and yes, it's awesome, but accessible. It's not. So this project aims to provide a ground up reimplementation of a similar flight model to provide a training ground. Da, 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 da. What this led to was me going, hey, all right, no, I'm going to try this here. Here's some pictures to go along while you're listening. Imagine pictures. I loaded it up. <laughs> It's made in Unity. I started it with my trackball. I floated around and I crashed into shit for about five minutes and said, all right, this is smarter than I am. But hey, mm -hmm. it definitely works. Yeah, I, I downloaded it. I played around with it. Yeah, it's very much that weird 60 OF uh, Elite Dangerous type of control. And I guess like, yeah, mm -hmm. if you if you actually need something to give you proper feedback for your, your race. Like a flight stick. Uh, yeah, well, not 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 even like gameplay input feedback i'm talking no, about like no scrub you need the flight stick and the throttle control on your left oh no and and, and you know the the ifinity setup of course yeah uh is this is the yeah. space trucking game this is like the one that everyone right. raves on about <laughs> but this is this is this is for the racing if you want to race your space trucks if you want to know if you're increasing in speed decreasing in speed that sort of shit this is this is for you it has vr support which you know it's unity vr support so make of that what you will but better than nothing <laughs> barfsville <laughs> <laughs> neat I, yeah. yeah i could only get the first level to work because all the other ones crashed <laughs> oh, no. yeah there, there, there's a, there's a, there's a couple crashes in there but again it's a free it's a free thing they're gonna continue working on it as long as there are people who are into elite dangerous racing who suck at it and need to practice hmm. all mm. right i'm done with it i <laughs> thought we'd give it a mention much like uh Minecraft. Oh, yeah. Oh, this 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 took this took a little bit of research, and now mm -hmm. they're they're saying on the GitHub page that this mod is now it's deprecated. deprecated. Oh. <laughs> but 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 to 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 rewind it a little bit, this is a mod for multi MC. Uh, it's a Minecraft launcher. If you play Minecraft with a lot of mods or skins or whatever, uh, and you need to like manage specific versions of things, then maybe you would be using multi MC to manage that. Um. So part two, there is a thing called GF. GVFL, which I thought was Games for Windows Live, but it's something else. It is a SDL2 style input window management system. Um, mm -hmm. there's the, the launcher comes with its own. If you try to use the system one, it kind of shits the bed. So, oh, this is something this is, I'd like to see side effects. Yeah. Um, th and that's the thing. The, the side effects here are it will work, but sometimes you'll get some freezes and sometimes you'll get some, some issues if you're trying to run Minecraft in X Wayland using multi MC. So, uh, this, this was a fix. They have apparently an updated guide for getting this working, um, which is just called, which I think is just updated into Minecraft Wayland. So, I mean, I guess go check that out. Follow the link. The link to the original is in yes. our show notes. 
We're going to make you read, unfortunately. Oh, no. Yeah, just click the first link on the readme.md. That, that, that's really all that is. But uh, yeah, the apparently the Linux testing was conducted on an Arch-based system. <laughs> because in the requirements, it says an Arch-based system. I'm sure you could find a way to get it to so, work so, on so, literally so, every here, other distribution. Here's, here's but, a question, though. <laughs> Do you think it was man, it was it was actually developed on Manjaro, or is this guy's actually running Arch? Uh, considering he actually built an entire mod for um, Minecraft to be Manjaro, able to run then, it in yeah. Wayland, he, he's Manjaro. running on uh, no, he's running on Arch. <laughs> They're the same thing. <laughs> I, listen, Not according to some people yeah, on I the know, internet. I can I can play <laughs> pretend, but. <laughs> I mean, Mint, Mint to Ubuntu are the same thing, right? Send your hate mail to LinuxGamecast.com. I mean, you're talking about a skin pack versus an installer, right? Debian <laughs> is part of the Ubuntu ecosystem, then. Yeah, it is. It's uh, compatible. It's where, it's, it's where they steal all their shit from, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. That's why it takes so long for the releases to come out. They got to steal all the shit. Mm -hmm. Indeed. <laughs> Coming, well... Other way around. Coming up ah. next. <laughs> Mighty Goose. Mighty Goose. Goose in danger? Oh. You will be in danger. Snails and cats. It's time for the Chairquisition. This week, we're taking a look at Mighty Goose, felt by Blast Mode and MP2 Games, done on the Construct 3 engine. Construct 3 engine. <laughs> You can pick it up for about 20 bucks. What is it? Mighty Goose is a fast-paced run-and-gun shooter starring a bounty hunter goose. Use epic weapons and devastating war machines to battle against screen-filling bosses and hordes of enemies. So we got to thank PlaySim, the publisher, for sending us all the keys. Um, so let's get into it. Pedro, take it away. Yes. Uh, so over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080 running on uh, KD Neon. It launched out of the box. It holds 144 FERPs during gameplay, but the cutscenes, it's kind of limited at 60. Eh, fair enough. Uh, it sounds absolutely amazing. Really, the soundtrack is high octane, as they call it. Uh, it's really well done. The graphics, well, look at them. They're premium hipster pixel of the honkiest caliber. The uh, dual sense. Which, uh, you know, if this was a Unity game, it's like, okay, new version of Unity, the uh, dual sense is working, but no, it's Construct. And the dual sense works without Steam input. That's amazing. So, um, for the fun, you know, every now and then there's a game that kind of goes far beyond my expectations. And Mighty Goose is one of them. Now, I could tell you that, you know, the mix of really awesome soundtrack over the top explosions, like to the point where you can't even see anything on screen. It's just explosions happening. Uh, the meaty action, the, whenever you hit something, there's that little freeze frame effect that just conveys the impact. And it, that, that that's what makes me like it so much. But... Yeah, this is a subjective bit, and subjectively speaking, I found myself with a big fat grin on my face, just leaning forward on the chair, smacking the square button like it honked in my ears. It's fun. I had a lot of fun playing this game. I have a lot more than squonk, Pedro. <laughs> uh, no, the square is the shoot, but triangle is honk. Yes, honk. triangle is honk. <laughs> That was the that was the pun. Never mind. Uh, but yeah, no, it is fun. It, it it it's a hipster pixel platformer technically that I actually enjoyed very very much. It looks to be a bit short, and uh, Jordan and Ven will get into that. But that probably also means that it doesn't really overstay its welcome. Uh, I I mean. The obvious comparison here is um, Mighty Goose versus Hunt Down, which is a very similar-ish genre that, that we covered a couple of weeks ago. And if I were to compare the two, I'd have to retroactively go back and duck a chair from Hunt Down because this is really fun. This is, is like, okay, a Hunt Down, they leaned on the camp hard and that helped a little bit. But this one, they don't care. This just completely over the top all over the place and the the backing soundtrack is amazing i really enjoyed it i really really enjoyed it so i have to give it four chairs 
All right, I, c- I couldn't pay attention to anything Pedro was saying. That robe is way too shiny. It just fucked with my ADD. So on uh, Fedora 34, 64-bit with the R93900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, yeah, it launches out of the box, holds uh, 60. I like all the character designs, the the whole... The, the, the enemies kind of remind me of the Tau from Warhammer 40K. I'm pretty sure Games Work- Workshop is going to sue somebody, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. Um, the, um, uh, what was it? Uh, I, the, yeah, character designs. Uh, it's all it's all well and good. Uh, one problem I do have with it, and apparently there's a setting to create outlines in explosions, is when the explosions start happening, it's real cool and satisfying. I can't see where the fuck my character is. My red and orange character in a sea of red and orange, which has resulted in quite a few cheap shots that have caused me some woe. Um, the soundtrack, though, like Pedro says, it's a fucking banger, man. It's it's real good. Uh, and PS4 controller walk, works out of the box. I got Xbox prompts for it, uh, so make it that what you will. Fun-wise, I mean, as far as gameplay goes, Mighty Goose isn't really anything special. It's a box-standard horizontal shooter. The levels vary. Uh, they they change things up quite a, uh, enough in between levels, but it's nothing new or exciting. This is all riffs on other things you've seen from, like, Metal Slug, uh, where, like, it's mostly aping from. Um, what you do get is the goose. And guns, many guns. And it's fun enough to run around, try to avoid getting shot and surviving until the next health pack drops. Because that's really what the ga- where the gameplay is, is managing your health to make sure that you can actually survive to the next uh, health pack before your goose gets cooked. I do like that you just turn into a roast goose when you die. It's pretty good. Um, you can you can summon vehicles. There's a cell phone that you can order drops from uh, Phantom Pain style, which is real handy during boss fights uh, and is a thing that I constantly forgot about. It's like, I'm collecting all this money. Oh, wait, I should spend it on stuff because you don't get to carry it over. So uh, make of that what you will. Um, and I, I don't Yeah, I, I don't know. It says something about the skill of my skill at the game when it's like either you the um, the health drops are either too soon or too far away. Uh, so there's there's a bit of some there's some difficulty jackknifing. But overall, it's not that hard of a game. Um and honestly, that's the presentation that's that sells it, right? It's a cyborg goose on the loose. It sells itself. You saw a reaction to this game a couple weeks ago. They're like, oh my god, it's a fucking goose with a mech suit and machine gun. That looks amazing. That's enough to get butts in seats. But um, Ven's going to bring up uh, the price point, and it's a very valid point, uh, especially with no online multiplayer. I'd expect something like this for maybe $7.99, $12 at the most. So if you can get it cheap, it's fun enough. Um, at the asking price, I would say hesitate on it, but I'll still give it three chairs. It's well done. I don't hate it. So let's talk about how it ran. You'd imagine it's hipster pixel. It ran fine over here on Debian uh, Bullseye, um, 1920X Threadripper, 2060, all that fun stuff. Very impressed. Um, you know, the first thing I ran into was if your Xbox One S X, what that one I have, if, if the batteries happen to die. Like, right when you play in the game, the game pauses. That's nice. However, if your controller dies and uh, Steam cannot reconnect the Bluetooth, which does happen um, with this game, grr on that. Um, no windowed mode. Notice that when I was getting ready to play it. Alt plus enter worked. You need to add a windowed mode to your game, people. And uh, you are unable to rebind your mighty trigger, but it's logically laid out and it does tell you that, you know, eh, it's just the left and right trigger buttons. No problem, man. Let's just talk about the fun, though, because, you know, this game really captured the fun of just the blow everything the hell up arcade run and gun from back in the day. Pull on the nostalgia. I mean, it's updated Metal Slug with 100% more goose. You get guns, you get sidekicks, you get power ups, bikes, tanks and honks. It's kind of brilliant. Seriously, one of your attacks is a honk that does absolutely fucking all. <laughs> Big fan of that. Pixel art, scaling, explosion, screen shakes. It all rings true. It's got that modern twist to it, and it just feels right. I really enjoyed my limited time with Mega Metroid Slug. Because you're going to charge um, $20 for what I consider effectively half a game. Um, how dare? That's like $5 more than Hollow Knight, and a game that I'm 50 plus hours in, and uh, I'm only nearing 70% completion. Yeah, max. You get about four point hours, nine levels of this game, and the solution to that is New Game Plus, which is replaying the same damn levels over. That's a flying spaghetti monster damned cop-out, in my opinion. It's neat, but it's 2021, and hey, yes, this is aping very heavily on Metal Slug 3, which, by the way, is $7.99 and has online co-op. So, um, 
you have a great game here. It's just not enough of it. I was streaming it last night. Turns out that I was on the last boss. It's like, oh, okay. I turned around and beat it. Now, I'm guessing the prize parity has something to do with the game being on the Switch, but hey, that's the thing. If you're thinking about picking it up, um, I'd suggest holding out for some additional campagons, be it in the form of DLC or something like that, because $20 for four hours, not selling me on it. But that's the thing. It kind of irritates me because it's such a fantastic game. What little there is of it. You got you got everything right. We just need more. But hey, I'll give you two. Just on that technical worky bits, man. All right. Um, so we got any final thoughts before we get out of here? I think the, the big complaint from all three of us is lack of online multiplayer. It, it's 2020. Uh, well, we would have beaten it. Yeah. I mean, you need online multiplayer. Um, Steam remote play is not a solution to that. And, uh, there needs to be more game for the price. Mm-hmm. The, the the price of the thing i i don't know <laughs> uh, for me it surprised me because it was a pixel platformer that i actually enjoyed but yeah no on, online multiplayer at this point is kind of a requirement and it is you and I, i've just yeah. not in recent memory have i went from this is a me- what do you mean there's credits yeah <laughs> yeah yeah being short it's it might need a bit more Mm-hmm. But I really enjoyed yeah. what I played of it. I, I really did. <laughs> Fair enough. Indeed. <laughs> All right. So coming up next, hate mail. Yeah. That's it. Boy. It's the end. You've reached the end. It's the final segment. It's the hate mail. Chances are I probably said something that wasn't entirely factually correct. And you'd like to call me out on it. That seems to be the popular thing to do. So... Go ahead. <laughs> Pedro, 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 there's only so many hours in a day. I mean, we'd have to contribute like an entire I mean, like section, a wing of people to. This show is what? Like an hour, between an hour and an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, it, you, w- I probably said something during that time that ticked you off the wrong way or was completely wrong. So, by all means, let me know about it. Go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button. Fill out the form. If it's a uh, pertinent enough bit of uh, hate mail, it will appear right here, right now. And if you're a game developer and you'd like us to have a look at your game, make sure all three of us can play it, because if not, we're just going to make fun of you. Damn it. That reminded me. I should have. Uh, we'll, we'll have one for next week. We got a new wall of shame of here's one sent oh. to your show without <laughs> keys or anything for a Windows only game. Um, so I, we, we never miss an opportunity to inform you that a developer can't read. Tells you something about the quality of the product. Now, <laughs> speaking of reading, I better get to this. This is going to take a minute. So <laughs> this is uh, the Arch versus Pi AVP showdown from Eshep. To retort to what Pedro said, it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. man, I'm a bit behind on the show, so fuck off. It's been a busy few weeks. Sucks. This is the only practical way for me to take part in the show. I hope y'all do um, enjoy the battery um, bantery bullshit I send in, though. Well, yeah, Pedro loves it. Thanks for yes. tolerating me. Uh, that fiasco with the retro arch, retro upload, could have gone better. Vin's delivery of that message was way better. Of course it was. I, I said it. <coughs> then uh, I'd hope to be in perfect tone, only to be fueled by Jordan's constant on brand beratement of Pedro during the whole thing. Pedro's pummeling <laughs> around, trying to defend his wrongness. With convention was beautiful, and yes, uh, just just yank your chain, man. I so wish I'd have been there um, all fair when, when that shit came to light, though. I explicitly uh, didn't write RetroPie in that message in, uh, in the hopes that, you know, someone would put it together. I hope it went as good as um, good live as it did in my head. Now, anyway, jokes aside, I love you guys. All you do, except for Pedro. Wait, I've been Sorry. Uh, speaking of which, how do I donate Vice subscribe? Uh, probably go to vice.com. Uh, buy, buy us a subscription, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> couldn't ask for a better show. I don't think there's uh, any show on the internet I've listened to for longer than LGC. That's dark, I'm sorry. Man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm really sorry. That, that mean, bar is super low. Like getting to watch in real time how someone's accent evolves over a decade how often do you get that kind of quality in a show? Question mark. Laka. What the hell's Laka? The 
it, retro it's arch a retro thing. arch uh, distribution. distribution. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the same thing. I mean, kind of, yeah. Uh, Laka doesn't have emulation station, which is the big point of contention anyway, but yeah. So, but can you I, just, I, like, install it, though? You could. But why would you want to? I'm just saying, it seems like all this RetroPie stuff is like varying degrees of laziness. Uh, yes, the, the, that that is. To be fair, you could apply that to most Linux distros anyway. I, I mean, and, and honestly, most Pi based projects are just like here's a pre configured image that you can stick in your Pi and it will boot, right? Like yes. you can you can always set the shit up on your own. It's not difficult, but you know, some people just want a one click solution. Yeah, possibly. I, I, I think like this is a very valid conversation and argument to be had between people who don't know how to Linux. <laughs> but as you were saying, Pedro. Yeah, to Ishap's point, uh, yes, no, I did put it together about two minutes after I was done talking. <laughs> it's like, oh, wait a second, I meant RetroPie this whole time, not RetroArch. Mm-mm. Oops. <laughs> we know so, yeah, meant. that one's on me. I cocked that one up yeah. completely. And, yeah, no, good on you for calling me out. And I do expect everyone who is listening to the show and watching the show, if that happens to be the case for you, if I do cock something up, Call me the fuck out on it. I don't know. Immediately. This, this is like don't one wait. Of the downsides Just do of it. arguing with Pedro. <laughs> Pedro will violently defend something until he gets like, oh, no. And he's like, oh, okay, whatever. Like, yeah, no. It's to the point that I'm proven wrong. It's like, oh, yeah. I did cock that up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's no payoff in proving Pedro right. It's easier to just ignore him. Keep frogging. What? Huh? <laughs> I was talking about our co-host, you monster. Someone Pay was wrong on the internet, Ven. Come on. Who? <laughs> that buzzing noise. Ah. ah. Yeah. I thought there was a fly in my headphone. It could be. Could be. <laughs> Beautiful people. I do believe on that bombshell. We're going to cue the music. You can always find us. We're kicking off at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Head over to twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's where we hang out. That's where a schedule is. And if you apply maths... To that schedule, you will find us live multiple days a week, except for on Sunday and Monday. Monday. Yes, Sunday and Monday, depending on where you're at. That's our weekend. If you want to get in touch with us, um, I'm just at Vin Vin Stone on Twitter. I'm there. You know, I'll, I'll click like the heart button. Like, hey, I might write you back. If you want to get in touch with me, you're like, going to have a conversation, hop in Discord, hop in IRC, or send an email. Because I'm, I'm not going to have a drawn out at 240 characters at a time. Just at Vin on our federated Mastodon instance, which is cleverly disguised at mass.linuxemcast.com. I'm Jordan Spung. I am the fly in your headphones. Listen to me go buzz, buzz, and then crawl inside your brain and take over, like just like Chekhov in Wrath of Khan. That's a timely reference. Follow me on Twitter at The Burning Fool or follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. We're almost done the Nuzlocke. I'm either going to die next session or we're going to be on the uh, final dude. So it's close. All right. And uh, you can find me on Twitter. It's at unaccounted for. If you'd like to debate the um, uh, pluses or minuses of uh, emulation station, I can absolutely do that. I do love arguing on, an inter- on the Internet. It is at unaccounted for F O U R. No, so. it's unaccounted five. Shut it's up. unaccounted your That's mom. version. It's unaccounted. It's unaccounted. My dad actually. Uh, Let's account for the credits. One to dad. It's like dad squared. I'm not your dad. No, you're my mom. As we've established, yes, yes. Now give me some milk. We gotta thank our lovely party patrons, like our advisors, the people giving us way too much money, like Omegas and Artharon. We also got to thank oh, man, I our executive like producers. Where it's going to be rolling no, around gold no. and Man, and shit. I, w- I wish, right? We got to thank our executive producers, Alias, Barb Brent, Scott Michaud, Mr. Foxdog, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Holy Toast, and our two held dwelling Milnick fans. Wielding Chicago kicks ass, but we got yeah, a lot of sea monsters like Jack B, Renault L, Rhetoric, X Machina, Truggy, Baratanuda, Justin Frostclaw, Kyle Lennox, Cast. And the Death Notes, Nova K, Basil B, Chad P, Romeo, Marson, System T, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresney, Kim, Smashley G, 
Chris, Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Doom to the what? Stephen B. You guys, I fixed that beans. formatting, but I'm scared to touch it at this point because it kind of works. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all the chairlings, all of them. Michael, Nubbin, help me out, Mr. guys. Alert. Mr. Amish, Douglas. Urtain, um, that includes you, Jolly. Jordan. Dodger. All right, Oswald. fine. Nick D. Dementor, Zeno, Daniel, Chris G. Minus nine, Monica, D. Oil of Hope. Proof. Rudy P. Rudy B. And Oil of Hope, our newest Patreon. Proof Thank that so we can, in fact, <laughs> read. What? Huh? Five dudes.